Hello and welcome to our weekly business news updates. And these are the top business stories making headlines. Our first story is about Ethiopian Airlines, which has finalized preparations to launch direct flights to Karachi, Pakistan, as of May 2023. This marks the 37th destination in Asia for the airline, which is the largest network operating carrier in Africa. The airline has also announced the resumption of direct services to Singapore on March 25, 2023. Flights were suspended in March 2020 due to the COVID pandemic. Moreover, the airline won the Cargo Performance Award in Brussels Airport on Thursday for its excellent service delivered and outstanding contribution to the growth of cargo traffic. Moving on, Zyride, an on-demand taxi service in Ethiopia, has announced its plan to go public, with a total of 100,000 shares being offered at a price of 1,000 bird per share. The shares can be bought at any branch of four major banks in Ethiopia, Awash Bank, Commercial Bank of Ethiopia, Amhara Bank, and Abyssinia Bank. As we move on to our next story, the Ethiopia Cup of Excellence program, a prestigious coffee competition, will not be held in 2023. This program has been a source of pride and income for Ethiopian coffee farmers, generating over $3 million in just three years. The competition attracted high-end coffee buyers from around the world and saw record-breaking prices for green coffee at global auctions. The average per pound price for coffee at the Ethiopia Cup of Excellence auction started at $28.44 per pound in 2020 and reached a staggering $400 per pound for the top scoring coffee at last year's event. Unfortunately, due to numerous issues within Ethiopia, the Alliance for Coffee Excellence has decided to suspend the program for this year. Despite the setback, the Alliance for Coffee Excellence is working closely with the Coffee and Tea Authority to ensure a successful return of the program in 2024. And in other business news, last week saw a flurry of investment activity in Ethiopia as delegations and investors from multiple countries explored opportunities in various sectors. Representatives from Pakistan, Russia, China, and the Czech Republic all visited the country with interests spanning from agriculture to construction to renewable energies. The Ethiopian government engaged with over 20 local and international investors interested in the tendering of eight state-owned sugar enterprises. Meanwhile, Ethiopia's Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Foreign Affairs, Demek Amakonen, discussed investment opportunities with Azerbaijani investors. And State Minister of Finance, Samarita Sawaso, held discussions with a Chinese delegation led by China International Energy Group, expressing interest in investing in fertilizer and cement factories, as well as renewable energy in Ethiopia. Representatives of Russian companies also visited different industrial parks in and outside Addis Ababa, expressing keen interest in investing in the manufacturing sector. An emission from the Czech Republic met with Ethiopian representatives to discuss collaboration in the agriculture sector and other areas of mutual interest. It remains to be seen how these efforts will translate into tangible outcomes, but they signal growing interest and potential for foreign investment in Ethiopia's diverse economy. In continental news, Africa is lagging behind on the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals, SDG, according to a senior UN economist, Adam el -Hiraika. Compared to other regions, the continent is making very slow progress and is even regressing on some development indicators. The UN economist highlighted the urgent need to make progress on SGD 17, which is a commitment to strengthening the means of implementation and revitalizing the Global Partnership for Sustainable Development. In other news, the United States nominee for World Bank Group President visited the African Development Bank in Abidjan as part of a global tour to gain African support for his candidacy. The former CEO of MasterCard highlighted inequality, the tension between humanity and nature, and the tendency to apply short-term solutions to long-term problems as a significant issue for his leadership campaign. African Development Bank President Akinwumi Adisena welcomed the call for a regenerative partnership between the World Bank Group and the African Development Bank, noting the need for a new way of working between the two organizations. In international news, the U.S. Federal Aviation Administration has cleared Boeing to resume deliveries of its 787 Dreamliner after halting them in February due to a data analysis error related to the jet's forward pressure bulkhead. 
Boeing has addressed the concerns and confirmed that the aircraft meets FAA standards. Meanwhile, U.S. regulators have shut down Silicon Valley Bank, SVB, the largest failure of a U.S. bank since 2008. The bank, which was a key tech lender, was struggling to raise money to cover losses from the sale of assets affected by higher interest rates. The Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation has taken charge of SVB's roughly $175 billion in deposits held at the bank. SVP is the 16th largest bank in the U.S. And finally, the dollar's decades-old dominance of international oil trade is being eroded as most deals with Russia's top outlet for seaborne crude, India, have been settled in other currencies due to U.S.-led international sanctions on Russia. India is the world's third largest importer of oil, and after Europe shunned Moscow's supplies following its invasion of Ukraine, Russia became India's leading supplier. Since a coalition opposed to the war imposed an oil price cap on Russia in December 2022, Indian customers have paid for most Russian oil in non-dollar currencies, including the United Arab Emirates, Dirham, and more recently, the Russian ruble, in a shift that has not previously been reported. That's all for this week's business news update. We hope you find it informative and insightful. Join us again tomorrow for another edition of News Analytica.